Hey, this is Steve Halleck of TikToking, back with another TikToking podcast. Let's do a little housekeeping before we get going here. Uh, this is the podcast. So on the podcast, I like to just sort of discuss kind of broader, uh, higher level watch related topics. Uh, and there's no real visuals. If you like to see my terrible camera work, then uh, you're welcome to watch on YouTube where I do put these, but they also go to Apple Podcasts and Spotify and a couple other services. So if you like to, I don't know, listen in the car or in the gym, or I listen to podcasts when I wake up too early in the morning and they put me back to sleep. Uh, so hopefully my voice can put somebody to sleep <laughs> with boring watch talk. Uh, so they're all there for you. Uh, and it's the same exact content, whether it's on YouTube or uh, on your podcast service, right? And then the reviews are where I go into actual like, okay, good, let's look at a watch and deep dive into it. And those really wouldn't make any sense as audio only. So those go straight to YouTube. Um, I definitely would appreciate if you are enjoying any of these to tell a friend, you know, if you have watch buddies or people you wanna get into stuff, uh, send them my YouTube, send them a link to the podcast, uh, comment on YouTube. I try to interact with the comments uh, as much as I can. At least I definitely read all of them. Um, and yeah, let's, you know, I'm trying to do more of these. It's a little bit hard because uh, this isn't my job. I don't make any money off of this. Uh, I, I actually started doing these before I even was selling watches. Um, and so it was, it was kind of a hobby to start. Now I suppose I, I can chalk it up as kind of like a PR activity, uh, which is fine, but it's just kind of hard to get myself to do them. So the more positive feedback there are is the more growth that occurs. Uh, all of these things are nice and I do appreciate them and they help me uh, kind of keep the fuel to keep these things going. So today I wanted to talk about uh, kind of new releases and innovation and our expectations, which I think leads to uh, better purchasing uh, decisions, basically. Um, and this is gonna be framed kind of, uh, I had somebody ask me this week what I thought of the Langa sport watch, I think it's called the Odysseus, um, before people were asking about the Code 1159 AP, which I've discussed a little bit. Also, I'm taping this uh, the day after the Tesla Cybertruck was released, uh, which was another kind of polarizing design and I think fits into this discussion. So uh, I thought we'd just kind of unpack all this. Now, my viewpoint is that uh, oftentimes we uh, either expect too much by basically expecting a, we, we want a revolutionary design uh, and at the same time, when we get a revolutionary design, we've proven that most of the time we don't actually like it in the, in the uh, current uh, time of it, right? So um, the Langa and to some extent the AP, both of them were kind of knocked by people, uh, and rightly so in, in some respects. I mean, the brands are complicit in this too. Um, but they were knocked for not being particularly um, unique or revolutionary or interesting uh, or whatever. So uh, this is, in, in the case of AP, I think particularly fair because they really laid on thick the press of how they were going to change the world with this watch. And it was the biggest thing since sliced bread. Um, and so they, they kind of brought it on themselves. Uh, Lanka, I don't think, did that as much. They, their press was basically like, this is a big deal for us, and we're gonna show something that's important for us. But they never really said like, we're about to show the best sports watch that's ever been made, and it, this is gonna blow everything out of the water and whatever. Um, and then Tesla kind of went the other way. They said, we're gonna show you something like you've never seen. Uh, and then they did show us something like we've never seen. And the initial reactions that I've seen have mostly been negative to the design, even though I really love it. I ordered one, uh, but also I'm a Tesla fanboy and I've been dying for their truck. Uh, so kind of no matter what it is. Uh, but in any case, the you have these sort of two sides of the same coin 
to where a new launch, it kind of can't win. And, I mean, some do, but they really have to thread the needle. Uh, but ultimately, I think as purchasers, we can learn from this and we can uh, kind of hone uh, our ability to know what's good and what's not good a little bit more. And I think we do that by focusing on what is actually important about the launch. So uh, if we go back to the Langa, uh, I actually don't think that it's reasonable at all to expect them to redefine the sport watch genre. I mean, it's a steel watch on a bracelet with a blue dial. Uh, it's always going to be compared to the Royal Oak or the Nautilus. Uh, but let's just be fair with these for a little bit. Uh, first of all, there there isn't a lot of innovation within watch design uh, ever, really. You have uh, most watches are round. It makes sense for a watch to be round, right? You have like time, which goes around, and it, it generally makes sort of a, a circle of a thing. Um, so pocket watches were generally round, clock faces usually round, uh, and people made a wristwatch by making a round thing, make it smaller, put some lugs on it, put a strap on it, and put it on your wrist. And that's going to always be the basic form of a watch. Um, but if you think of actual uh, kind of revolutionary departures from that, you have these Genta designs, uh, but not all of his designs were winners, right? Like most of the Gerald Genta brand watches uh, were not very successful uh, in terms of their design. There aren't a lot of people that will tell you that they thought the Octo was incredibly beautiful, at least not in not until the most recent uh, Finissimo versions. Um, the uh, the IWC versions of his designs were not that great. Uh, the Vacheron, I mean, uh, you know, they weren't all winners, right? And not only that, but they were all panned when they first came out. Uh, the Nautilus was not, the Nautilus actually wasn't successful or particularly well liked universally for until the last couple of years. The Royal Oak was definitely not a hit at first. Uh, it was not universally loved. Um, and so you have, again, this, uh, this sort of catch-22 for a brand of the fact that, that it, it is very rare to actually make a revolutionary design. And if you happen to do it, uh, best case scenario, it's probably going to be panned. And then maybe later in the future, people will realize that it was good. Um, and this is pretty easy to see in cars. This happens a lot. Um, most cars look alike, kind of like watches. I mean, there's different classes of cars. Obviously, trucks don't look like sport sports cars, but uh, like Elon Musk showed last night, uh, trucks have almost always looked the same. Um, but then you have, uh, take for example, the Lamborghini truck uh, that came out, uh, God, almost it's like 30 years ago now, which is amazing. Uh, now, Everybody thought that truck was really ugly, and it's still, it's a weird design, right? But those have turned into big collector's items, and uh, most of the time you would look back on that with some sort of nostalgia and um, fondness as to the fact that actually it was a pretty interesting design, and we haven't seen anything else like it. Uh, and if you, if you look at the Tesla truck itself, the product that I think it most resembles, especially with the bare steel body, is the DeLorean, uh, which was certainly not thought to be a beautiful car when it came out. Uh, however, now you look back and first of all, it made its mark. We're here in 2019 and something comes out and the first thing it reminds us of is the DeLorean, which was this tiny little uh, boutique car from 40 years before. Um, and also, it is actually really cool. It's a really cool looking car and a really cool looking design. And it definitely didn't fail because of the design there. You know, that's an amazing other story in itself. Uh, but uh, I think it goes to show the point that we as a, as a people, as a group, uh, consumers in general and uh, luxury consumers, uh, maybe even more so, are not good at processing really revolutionary designs or things that are really different, they usually occur to us as ugly. Uh, and, and while we want 
something that is totally new. Most of the time when we actually get something totally new, we're not immediately happy with it. And it's not till years into the future that we realize uh, if it's good or if it's not good. Um, so where does that leave us? Let's go back to the longa and let's think, okay, maybe it wasn't revolutionary. Maybe it is, maybe anything, but does that even matter? And I think it doesn't. I think that the actual important thing with this watch is that it is a longa steel sports watch. And uh, it wasn't trying to be the be all and end all new next best thing of what a sports watch can be. Just like uh, most longas are just round watches, right? Longa isn't known for having a completely revolutionary design. That's not what they do. So I think that the reality of this watch, and I haven't gotten to see one in person, uh, but, but my experience with Longa is that uh, maybe more than any brand, certainly more than any big brand, uh, I'm always impressed when I pull a Longa out of the box for the first time. They're always of better quality than I expect them to be. And there's something about them that just, uh, it just feels nice and it kind of sparkles and they're, they're just really nice objects. And I expect this watch to carry that on, which in itself is an interesting thing when you're talking about a sports watch. That's a pretty cool um, thing to have is a really nice object that can be comfortably worn every day and uh, in lots of different situations. And I think it's gonna be a really cool platform for other things. Uh, you can imagine when they put a perpetual calendar in it, uh, you know, I'm partial to the Royal Oak perpetual calendar, which I think is way better than the Nautilus perpetual calendar. Uh, but, I, but I think that uh, this Lunga could be really cool with a perpetual or with a chronograph or with both, um, with different dial colors, uh, it, it's going to be a cool platform, and I think it is a watch that uh, does add something to the landscape. Um, I think it is a viable alternative because of Longa's craftsmanship to a Royal Oak or a Nautilus or uh, something like that. Uh, the 1159 doesn't interest me in that same sort of way, um, but I'm just not, I don't know. It doesn't get me so much. So maybe that one's just a miss, or maybe I'm the one that's wrong on that. Uh, and the Tesla truck, that thing's just cool. Come on, if you don't get it, you're missing something. Uh, how cool is it that somebody just really, totally was willing to, to make something completely different and wild, and uh, I'm gonna get one, and my friends are gonna think I'm crazy, and uh, my, uh, my wife's friends are all gonna think it's terrible, and I'm gonna have fun in it. So ultimately, that's what it really comes down to. Like, is, the, is it a good object? Does it work? Is it fun? Does it put a smile on your face? Uh, and I think a lot of times we're just too quick to judge. So I guess uh, overall I'd say sit back, don't let the kind of zeitgeisty opinion uh, encroach too much, form your own opinion. Don't expect things to be too crazy or out of the box. And if they are too crazy and out of the box and they make you uncomfortable, realize that uh, we're not good at deciding these things. Uh, and, and maybe if it does make you a little bit uncomfortable, that means that it could be something great. Uh, only time will tell. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please uh, share, tell your friends, uh, or tell me if uh, you think uh, these things suck, uh, or just keep it to yourself. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Bye-bye.